How now, Ophelia? What's the matter? Oh, my lord, my lord, I have been so affrighted. With what I th name of God? My lord, as I was sewing in my closet, Lord Hamlet, with his doublet all embraced, no hat upon his head, his stockings fouled, ungartered, and down to his ankle, pale as his shirt, his knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous and porporate, as if he had been loosed out of hell, to speak of horrors, he comes before me. Mad for thy love? My lord, I do not know, but truly I do fear it. What said he? He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm, and with his other hand thus o'er his brow, he falls to such pursuit of my face, and he will draw it. Long stayed he so, at last, a shaking of mine arm, and thrice his head was waving up and down. He raised a sigh so piteous and profound, as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and in his being. That done, he lets me go, and with his head over his shoulder, he shoulder turn he seemed to find his way without his eyes for out of doors he went without their help and to the last bended their light on me come go with me I will go seek the king this is the very ecstasy of love whose violent property fordoes itself and leads the will to desperate undertakings as oft as any passion under heaven that does afflict our natures I am sorry. What have you given him? Any hard words of, of late? No, my good lord, but as you did command, I did repel his letters and denied his access to me. That hath made him mad. I am sorry that with better heed and judgment I had not coated him. I feared he did but trifle and mean meant to rack thee. But be sure, my jealousy, by heaven it is as proper to our age, to cast beyond ourselves in our opinions, as it is common for, thy, for the younger sort to lack discretion. Come, go to the king, this, this must be known, which being kept close might move, more grief to hide than hate our utter love come.